Hi, my name is James. I'm a PhD candidate in the Sharp Lab at the SickKids Research Institute. I spend my days studying elastic biological materials. Hmm? For example, pull your skin. Anywhere. Why is it stretchy? Well, you have something called elastin in there. Elastin is a material made up of proteins and it is all over our bodies, even in our organs. Our lab works on understanding elastin and another material called resilin, which is found in insects. And we do this in the hopes that we can replicate it one day for our own medical purposes, like building new arteries or spinal discs or better joints. I work mainly with resilin. It's this really amazing material, also made up of proteins, that is essentially a stretchy solid. You can think of it kind of like an elastic band. It's found in the joints of jumpy flying insects like flies or cicadas. Now imagine for a second an insect's wing. It goes up and comes down, but 200 times a second. Resilin, that stretchy, solid, elastic band type material I study, is what pulls the wing back down towards the insect's body. What is so awesome about resilin and why I study it is that even with all that movement and all that flying, it doesn't break down. Not only that, but it's around 99% frictionless, meaning even with all that repetitive action up and down, the resilin is keeping the insect from overheating and blowing up. And to top it off, resilin is one of the stretchiest, or here comes the science word, extensible materials we know about. Now, think about that in the context of the human spine, for example. Imagine if we could create a material to use in reconstructive surgery that is as frictionless, durable, and stretchy as resilin. So now that you know what I do and why I do it, I wanna give you a sneak peek of how I do it. We're going to take a tour of the lab and I'll show you a few interesting aspects of my research. And here we are. This is a wet lab and that means that we work with solutions and live organisms. All right, so here we have a pipette and it allows me to pipette accurately and precisely small volumes of liquid. Here we have a falcon tube. We put solutions inside of it. If you want a test tube, go find chemistry. Last but not least, we have the spatula. This is what I use to weigh out dry chemicals, salts, or even protein. I can't get resilin from the insects themselves, so I have to make it. How does one make protein, you ask? In this lab, and in many labs, we rely on bacteria. It makes the protein for us. The basic steps of our research are get some bacteria from the freezer, feed the bacteria so they grow and grow and grow some more, and while they're growing, they make tons of protein. This is a flask of bacteria food. We are in front of the shaker room, which is where we grow bacteria and where bacteria make protein. Shake, shake, shake. Shake and bake. Then we separate the protein from the bacteria. We purify the protein. And once we have this purified protein, let the experiments begin. In this tube of purified protein is resilin. The question is, how do we go from this protein to the stretchy elastic material that's found in insects. You can kind of think of these proteins in here as individual strings. And when you have a bunch of them all tied together, you get a web and it becomes stretchy. But how do the strings come together? To bring the proteins together, we add acid. The proteins then form their own liquid, in a sense, a liquid protein. Like oil and water, we now have two separate liquids that don't mix, the salt solution, around the liquid protein. Now, normally in an insect, the insect cells would secrete the protein, an enzyme would come along and attach the individual protein together to form your elastic material. What I do in the lab is I just use a chemical to cross-link these and make them into elastic materials. Now, the reason we care about this is because if we can change this first stage of self-assembly of resilin, then maybe we can alter the end product so we can make it more stretchy or less stretchy, more durable, less durable. And that's important because we'll be putting it in different areas, maybe in a spine, maybe we need to make a blood vessel. All these things have different mechanical properties. And so we need to be able to fine tune resilin to match your body's tissue specific properties. Okay, test, test, science, sick kids.